Welcome to the Impulse. My name is Minister Marv D. Hi, my name is Kilo, and I am from Hot 91. Yeah. Hey, yeah, what's up? This is your boy, Bella the Servant. And we're going to have an exciting day, and this is Voices of Freedom. After these commercials, we'll be right back, everyone. Wish you could find a landscaper, a plumber, or roofer. Simply, now you can. With Monday Protocol. through Friday, morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, I have such a wonderful time uh, on Hot 91. And I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to be the co-host on your show. I'm very excited to be one of the first, besides Butler, uh, to be here accompanying you with this awesome topic. I hope you guys are encouraged today because we are going to be getting to the nitty-gritty about uh, a very uh, interesting topic and a very timely topic. Um, so Hot 91, oh, oh, I'm sure you have heard of Hot 91. We are the radio station of Notebook State University right there on the campus and uh, not only do we bring that great music that you guys love so much, but we also bring um, community events. We also keep you in the know. We are your first informers and I think that's why um, you all love Hot 91. So much. Uh, I have a show that is going to be premiering uh, very soon in the month of August. I hope um, it's going to be called the Kickstart Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. In which I'm going to be keeping you informed, of course, with traffic, news, and weather. But we're going to dig a little deeper and uh, keep you informed. That's that's the number one thing I want to do is keep you informed. Uh, we're going to have a very interesting topics and very interesting segments. One in which I am very uh, proud about is very close and dear to my heart. It's called uh, Black Youth Empowered, in which we're going to be uh, not only interviewing great youth in the area and nationally who's doing great things, but also bringing forth stories about uh, black youth who are doing positive and great things. Because I think that's what we need. We need to see black, uh, black young people doing great and positive things, not just uh, out here doing the wrong thing. You know, we gotta share that positive uh, attention. So, so glad to be here and uh, I'm ready to get started. You are listening to Impulse Radio. Welcome back to the Impulse. I'm here with Kilo and we're gonna be talking about our first discussional topic the origin of black. Um, as far as I know, Kilo in history is in the beginning. Black has been a thing that people call colorless, emptiness. To just bring it down to a little bit of history, um, in the European terms, uh, the word black means a sensational color. The Bible does not speak about race at all in the Bible. The Bible says this, the Bible says family, tribe, nation, these are words that we need to start gripping. My family, my tribe, my kindred, my yes. nation. Okay. Because dark skin. Oh man. Uh, they use the word more. M-O-O-R. Mm -hmm. And and that that was to just say that you're separated from all that is light that you have dark, that you're without color. So um as we speak about this origin of black today, and I'm not going to even start saying the, even the word black because the word black to me is a value. Black is a value as well as white yeah. is a value. So if we know that black is a value and white is a value, then why do we interact with each other, I'm talking about black and white, as though we don't have any value? as though we are uh, up against each other and, 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 and we just have hatred in our heart for what happened back then. But we're going to bring this to the positive light right now. Yes, yes. What do you think about what you've been seeing, what's been going on thus far with the, uh, Sterling and different things that's just been going on all over the world as opposed to everybody's talking about this is a racism and racist action. Well, it's a uh, very complicated environment. Um, Black Lives Matter. Um, I would agree with that statement personally. I would agree that Black Lives Matter. And I think it's been in the media that when you say Black Lives Matter, that that excludes anything else from mattering. And that's not the case at all. Um, because one says that black lives matter, that doesn't mean that white lives don't matter. 
or Indian lives don't matter or Asian lives don't matter. We're just saying, hey, my life matters too. Um, and I also want to say, um, as far as seeing uh, what seeing yourself as is how God sees you, you touched on that. Um, that's not uh, dismissing that your black matters. That that's just saying. First of all, let's look at how how God wants you to see you. Let's look at what God sees because God doesn't see black. He doesn't see white. He doesn't see Asian. He sees your heart. That's what the word says. So I want you, um, um, especially young people, I want you to look at yourself, not that, oh, I have black skin, so I matter, and I'm the bomb. Yes, that is, you are the bomb, and you matter, but that's not, your black skin is not the reason why you matter. You matter because you were chosen by God. You were made by God. You were wonderfully and fearfully made. Um, he, he knew you before you were even knitted. I want you to look at yourself, how God sees you, number one, and then everything else as far as, um, loving you because you have curly hair, straight hair, black skin, white skin can come secondary, you know, thirdly. Um, but first and foremost, let's look at ourselves as far as why do we matter. We matter because God says we matter. And, uh, you know, that's number one to me personally. You know what, Kilo, that was well said. Um, I'm going to ask Butler the same question. I want to hear your input on it and how you feel about it, Butler, while... You uh, you know, deal with street and outreach and things like that. I want, I want, I want to hear your take on the origin of black, also why black matters to brothers and sisters on the street. Yeah, you know, uh, for a long time, man, like for many years, though, it's, it's always been like racism. It's always been some type of separation. And uh, you know, the thing about it is, uh, uh, this stuff stopped a long time ago, and. It was supposed to, but you know, like you had people like Martin Luther King, you had people like Malcolm X, you know, they came and, and you know, they, they were great fighters during the civil rights movement. What, you ha what happened is though, like years later, you know, like you look at my generation, you look at what's going on in the streets now, like you had a lot of parents and a lot of grandparents that came from that generation that taught their kids and taught all the young ones about all the stuff that happened back then. And so, Naturally, you know, like, you know, a white person will feel like, okay, well, I'm better than this person right here. Or, you know, an older white person might feel like, well, we got more knowledge and everything else. Than you. And uh, the thing is, you know, as people, black people, white people, we have to be really, we have to be smarter than that. And uh, we have to realize that it's not about power, it's not about money, who's better than anybody. What we have to realize is that at one time in history, these were really real serious issues. Racism, you know, segregation, all these things are real issues. But what's going on now is that we're coming to a time where things are starting to get better. You know, uh, different uh, uh, ethnics and different groups of people are starting to come together. You see a lot of inter interracial dating. You know, you see a lot of people, uh, different races working together on jobs. But what's going on is, is that you have the media. And, uh, and a lot of people, you know, uh, have a, have a hard time understanding this and agreeing with it. What happens is you have the media, you know, like when a cop shoots a black person or or they tackle a black person, the media will hop all over it. And then and they will say things like, did you see what happened right here? Did you see what happened? And w what's going on is, it's not the white man that's the enemy, it's not the black man that's the enemy. The enemy is the media. It's the people that, that are coming on your TV and they're saying, look what happened, you know, and by doing that, they're trying to stare two groups up, you know, because let's be real, when a black person sees a cop shoot uh, another black person on the news, like, you know, what we just seen recently, you know, or, and, and as far as, you know, uh, getting beaten down and tackled, you know, and the black person only got a, don't even have a weapon or anything in his hands. When we see stuff like that on TV, that gets us riled up, that gets us hyped, that gets us angry. We get on the streets, start throwing the picket signs, and you know, and we start hating cops, you know, we start, you know, saying all these bad things. And that's what the media wants to happen. They want to put separation in between both races. And if you look at what's really going on, you know, the, 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 the people at the top, I like to call it your super elite. Your people who are at the very top, your rich people, the people who have money. They want this to keep happening, to keep us separated, to keep the people on the bottom separated so that we can't get to that level and we can't see what's really going on. As long as they keep us distracted, 
by keeping us separated, we're gonna continue to have these problems over and over and over. And uh, that's that's what that's what we're going through right now. So, with us knowing that God doesn't look at us differently, but He looks at us the same. Origin of black. That's history. Yeah. That's gone. We still remember it. Yeah. But that's gone. Leave it back there. That's that's been the problem today. Yeah. African Americans don't want to leave. What happened back in ancestor time? There. We can't forget it. But if we don't let it go. And here's a word right here. We don't learn to forgive. Oh wow, forgiveness. We're gonna always be trapped. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Wow. In, inside of this thing that we're talking about racism, we're talking about prejudice, let's talk about forgiveness. How, how do we do that after seeing all that went oh. on already? Man. On television, getting beat by cops. All that type of stuff. Murdered like a man. Murdered. Mm. But see, we're gonna bring it to the positive light here. Yeah. We got to, we gotta forgive anyway. Mm -hmm. The Bible even says this, and I know that it is hard. Yes. Lord. If somebody <laughs> murders you, mm. somebody in your family, yeah, you still gotta forgive. You still have person. to forgive that person. The same person that wronged you, you still have to forgive that person. And really, <clears throat> I wish I had the answers and I wish I had a one, two, three step. Number one, this is what you do. Number two, this, this is what you do. I don't have that and I don't think anybody has that. I think you really have to give that to God, honestly, and allow, you know, just say, he, lay it at his feet. Here you will here you are, Lord. I am willing. I think that's all we have to be, our willing vessels. I'm willing, Lord, um, to let it go and not uh, hold this anger harbor these hard feelings i'm ready to forgive um work it out use me how you see fit oh god move through me have your holy spirit ever present in me um so that i'm able to to forgive this person forgive uh these people who have wronged me who have wronged somebody i love wow and, and that is so true we must break free from you that's right We'll never be free. We'll always be feeling like we're in bondage. We'll be feeling like captivity. a young man or a young woman that's been in prison for 15 or 20 years, and when they get out, we know how it is. They still feel like they're in prison. Yeah. They don't do everything the way they used to do it before they was out. Yeah. I mean, before before they went in, they don't do the same, same things the way they used to do it. They always still feel like they're trapped. They feel like they can't get a job. Even when I saw a young man eating that just got out of prison, he had he had his food mm. and things like that. This stuff is so very real. Yeah, it is. And if we don't let go of this, then we're gonna still feel like that. This this is the way we're feeling over America right now. Right. And can I chime in right here, Mr. Yes, Mama? yes, go ahead. I think with um my generation of people, I know we are tired as far as um what we see on television and, and how our people are being um treated. But I want to remind you um who who God is and um the promises that He has for us. I know um we feel justified for being angry. You know what, this is what they doing. So I'm out here, I'm, I'm angry, I'm passionate about it. And of course you wanna do something about it, but we we have to remember who God is. He said um, that we can do all things through him. So uh, don't feel as though you can't get a job, you you, you feel um, like you're constrained, constrained uh, because of what the white man does or what the white man is doing. We can do all things through Christ. You can get that job, you can make it to that next level, can succeed in corporate you can succeed in corporate don't feel uh, in captivity to anger because that's nothing but the evil one I want you to know that you can do all things to Christ that you can forgive that does not make you weak because I think that's one thing you know if you're not out here fighting for your freedom but you're weak you don't you know you don't believe in the greater cause but no just say no I, I think God got it covered and I'm covered by the blood and you know I'll let him do it <laughs> the Bible says even when we are weak 
Yes. We are made strong. Yes. So just remember that. Even when it seems like we are beaten, seems like we have to just go ahead and throw in the towel, mm. we are made stronger through that. Yes. We know how to suffer. We know how to go through things. I mean, this is a, this is a one-up that we have over probably any other, but on the positive end, that doesn't say that our Caucasians is not struggling, our, our Latinos are not struggling. Just in California, you got people getting killed left and right, Latinos getting killed left and right in California. So this is not about race issue. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of thereof. So, how can we as any type of race say that this is my world, this is my place, this is my, this is my city, this is my town, this is my state, when the Bible says the earth is the Lord. He is allowing us to live here on this place. So why are we treating each other the way we're treating each other? I don't know. But until we come to the realization that we're going to have to stay unified. We're going to have to be unified. That's the only way that this thing that we have, that we're living on the earth, is going to be able to survive. Because up in the high places, it's wickedness going on right now. And I'm not even going to get into politics. Mm -hmm. Because we all know that if something is allowed and we don't say anything about it, yeah. And I'm not just talking about black. I'm not just, I'm talking about all of us. We're gonna be in a world of chaos yeah. and war. And I also want to remind the people of God that we have power. Um, even though you may feel as though you're weak because you're leaving it in God's hands, we have power. The Lord says that, um, that, that we can uh, decree a thing and it should be established. Yes. So we can uh, say to that thing, I decree and I declare. And also the word says that whatever you loose in heaven, it will be, I mean, loose on earth, it will be loose in heaven. You put whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. So you can say, I decree and I declare that the, uh, discrimination will stop. I decree and I declare that my children are covered by the blood and that they will do uh, exceed, I mean, that they will do all that they want to do in Christ. Um, and that the Lord will move on, um, on their behalf exceedingly abundantly. You know, just 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 decree those things, declare those things. Don't just say, well, I guess, uh, I guess this is how it's got to be. You know, I guess, you know, we stuck in working at McDonald's. If you work at McDonald's, no shade. I'm just saying, I know you want more. Well, I guess, you know, I, I don't went to jail. I got this felony, this felony on my record. No, you decree and you declare, um, I'm going to be uh, somebody. I am successful in the name of Jesus. I am going to do what, what God has called me to do. I'm going to fulfill my purpose. And it will be done. Amen. 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 So you got me in here preaching, Mr. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. And we're all on the same earth. And we're not all in the same place at all times, but we're scattered abroad. And the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth, us as Christians. Yeah. So if we're the salt of the earth, why do we sometimes choose not to go over this side where the Caucasians are at? Or not choose to go over this side where the Mongols are at? Mongols meaning uh, uh, Chinese, Spanish, and Latinos. We don't, we, we don't want to go over there. We want to keep everything inside of a box. God does not want us to keep African American in a box, yeah. Caucasian in a box over here, uh, uh, Chinese and Latino in a box over here. Yeah. He wants us all to be unified as one in this world. I'm going to tell you right now, the way things are going, chaos is going to continue to go on right. until we unify together. Being unified together doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean uh, because I'm a Christian I'm better than you because because I was in the world before and the Bible tells me I can be in the world but not of the world not doing the same things that I used to do now being on a positive side now I'm realizing this when I see a Caucasian person and when I see a Spanish person, a uh, uh, Chinese person, they don't look different to me. But you say, that's the dance, how they don't live, how, how do they not look different? Uh, their skin is different. That's where we're wrong at. When we approach people and the first thing we're thinking about kilo is skin, yeah. then we open the door for the racism. Yeah. 
when we go inside of a grocery store as African Americans and we walk down the aisles and a Caucasian is looking at us like we're gonna steal something and we turn around and say, God bless you, have a nice day. That right there stopped all of the racial activity that they was even thinking about. A black person coming in the store, the first thing they're gonna do is steal. If we go in with the right attitude in a store, no matter how we're being looked at, no matter how we're being talked about, turn a deaf ear to it and say, God bless you, thank you, God loves you, and things like that. That will not be turned away. There is not a person I know of any color, of any color, that will, if you tell them that Jesus loves them, have a good day, have a great day, can still cuss you out. <laughs> I have not seen that. I don't know about anybody else, y'all, but I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen that either, though. No. <laughs> so, with that being said, Kilo, what do you think about uh, how the world is going now? Going from place to place, being in the corporate world, as such yourself, you're, you're coming up in corporate because yes. I'm quite sure there's a lot of Caucasians in in what the field you do in real estate. Yes. Do you really care, or do you what is it in your mind what they're thinking about you every time your elevation is coming up? Yes, <laughs> it's not in my mind so much. Of I care. I uh, well, no. Let's be honest. I care about how I present myself. So um. I, especially in real estate, I try not to look, uh, and this is going to sound so bad, but I try not to look too ethnic. And it's not because I'm ashamed of how I look, it's just um, you have to do what you have to do in this corporate world. And that really sucks that we have to do that. But um, I have um, two things, well three things against, uh, against me. Number one, I'm young. Um, I'm a young woman, I'm turning 25 this year. Um, but I look younger in the face. I get, uh, <laughs> before we even started, Mr. Marvin said, you look like 18, 19. I get that all the time. I look like a good, solid 18, 19. So that's number one. I'm young. I look young. Number two, I am black. I'm a minority. Um, and number three, I'm a woman. So <laughs> those three things sometimes work against me in real estate. Um, being a young woman, a young black woman, does she know what she's doing? Um, does she know uh, how to maneuver in this business? Um, ooh, her hair is big and curly. <laughs> um, can she handle it? So sometimes I'm, I'm aware of that. Um, I try to forget about it, but um, I get asked that all the time. How long have you been doing this? Or the looks that I get when I'm meeting the clients for the first time. So I try to forget about it, but it's always brought to, to the forefront. I just make sure I'm doing what I have to do. I make sure that I'm proving, uh, I don't want to say proving them wrong, but proving them wrong. Um, making sure I'm saying a prayer of favor. Lord God, cover me so that I'm favored. I, ha I find a favor in the hearts of these clients so that they, are, they don't have any um, any doubts about my, my capabilities. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Wow, that is an awesome statement and well put on that because Thank you. Uh, that's so real because that has to be heard. Yes. Uh, you have a young woman that wants to go into the corporate and do these things, but that's the first thing they think. Yes, right. Before they get in there, oh man, I'm one, oh man, I'm this color, uh, and, and that. Yep. And they're going to look at me as a friend and they're going to think that I can't do this. That's right. But God said in his word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't say whether it was white or black or polka dot. Right. Yep. He said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of us. Yep. All of us have characteristics and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Black, white, Spanish, everybody has different characteristics. Now we can characterize ourselves in different ways by hair, uh, by the color of skin, eye color, and all this type of thing. No one has ever seen or, or said, man, we have never seen a black man with blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And th I'm going to put this on the record now. Just because a Caucasian man has blue eyes doesn't mean he's a devil. Mm -hmm. See, this is, what, <laughs> this is where the racial slurs have to stop. Mm -hmm. 
And 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 this is where we can get so caught up in this yeah. that here's a word, yeah. prejudice, to mm. start coming to the forefront. And this is in Christianity too. Prejudice. Yeah, it is. It towards is. another. So I'm talking to you now. What do you prejudice? Do you think about uh, things as far as a Caucasian person being present towards you? Do you have any prejudices, tendency yourself about any other, you know, any other color? Is it in the back of your mind, is it in the forefront? Mm -hmm. I think it would be very hard uh, as a human being to say, oh no, I don't have any prejudices. I um I don't see any color. <laughs> we would I would love to say that. I think everybody would love to say that. But that is not the truth. I think some have bigger prejudices than others. I I um unknowingly have prejudices. Like when you talk to a girlfriend and she say, Girl, let me tell you about what so and so did at my work today. And you say, Girl, was well, she white or black? <laughs> That's the first thing. You say, Was well, she white or black? Ooh, now does that matter? <laughs> why, why does that matter? So yeah, and then also being in this generation, um, with all of that going on in the world, it is I think it's hard to say, you know what, I'm so tired of my, my black brothers and sisters dying, you know, these white people. It, it's it's easy to get caught up into that. Yes. It's very easy to get yes. you know, get caught up into, you know, these white people. So I have to check myself sometimes and say, you know, it's not about white people. And then at this day and age, our focus, of course, we have to always fight for justice and fight for good, but our focus right now it should be getting these people saved because we are in the last days. <laughs> so um, this this chaos, all this, um, all the craziness that's going on in the world, Mr. Marvin, um, it's, it's, it's meant to happen. It's, it's in the last days. It said, you know, in the Bible that these things are going to happen. So we need to be worried about getting people saved at this point. Rather, it's white, black, blue. And you were talking about as far as uh, prejudices and um, even in the Christian world, I think that prohibits us as Christians from talking to somebody that doesn't look like us and getting them saved. Um, oh girl, he a white man, he not gonna listen to what I gotta say. Oh girl, she Chinese, she, it's not about that. It's about, you know, looking at trying to be more like Jesus, looking at the heart of the people. So. Oh wow, that is monstrous right there. Now, here was a question from Facebook. Like I said, we're going to be interacting Ooh, with you on Facebook also. <laughs> so send your comments to the show. The shows are going to be airing on Wednesday. Send your comments on Tuesday. Uh, right on Facebook, we're going to be putting the question and the topic of the day up there. So I want you to comment. Uh, person that, 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 um, a person that wants to stay anonymous, Kilo said this to me. She was watching X Factor. All my X Factor fans out there. Hey. hey X Factor, huh? Man, try not to get three strikes. Well, the X Factor, on the X Factor, the panel was Caucasian. The whole panel yeah. was Caucasian, this person was saying to me. In the audience, you had predominantly Caucasian and a, a mixture of Spanish and everything else and all that few speckles of African American. Well, you had an elderly black lady, around her mid-60s, got up to do her performance. I say ministry, not performance. Got up to minister, sung a song, she sung the first chorus, the first verse in the first chorus, and man, she was dynamite. She wow. started, man, she had them stop for a while, wow. and, and they was just looking, and then all of a sudden, you had dancers coming out there, man. I'm telling y'all, man, you had people break, break dancing. dancing. Oh. You had people break dancing, All right. pop locking, what? everything. You had a full crowd of 40 or plus out there. They was doing their thing out there, and the lady was still singing. She stayed on beat, everything. Stayed in key. She was singing. First thing, the first thing that the judges did, they was looking in awe. It was like, wow. Then all of a sudden you see Caucasian people. Spanish and everybody started clapping, started shouting, man. I mean, the spirit morale was high. Oh, it wow. was moving in the place, Kilo. When, when you know, when you get in a black church, uh -huh. pick them up and put them down that's right, in the that's church, right. man. I'm telling you, that's what they was doing. And these were Caucasian people. So at the end of her ministry, 
have the standing ovations and everything. The person on Facebook told me in their, in their, in their comment, at the comment area down the bottom of that video, there was people chiming in saying, yes, they were chiming in saying, look at those white people trying to be black. And, and, and look at them trying to shout. Now to you, what could happen? What could be started out of that? Um, a lot of stuff could be started at beef. <laughs> First of all, uh, how can you say how someone is praising or worshiping, is acting or behaving like another race? That doesn't even make sense. So um, she was sent there to do something. Um, it wasn't a coincidence that she was there. It wasn't a coincidence that she uh, picked that song to minister. It wasn't a coincidence um, that all those people who were there were there. So somebody could have got saved that night. You you never know. Somebody could have ran up on her when she was done to say, can you tell me a little bit more about that Jesus that you were thinking about? Um, so, you know, to say, hey, they were acting black, that's uh, kind of dismissing the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, to lose yourself in the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that was color color coordinated, but <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Man, because the last time the last time I read my word, mm -hmm. it says the Bible says, "Let everything that have breath That's what it says. praise, praise the, the Lord." Lord. That's right. It didn't say whether it was black, polka dot, pink, or blue. It said, I, "Even the birds praise the Lord." Right. They look down and eat. <laughs> look up, chirp, chirp. Look down and eat. Look up, chirp, chirp. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Yes. Drums. Good times, poems, everything. Everything with the breath. Lord. Amen. Everything. Yes. So, brother, I just heard Kilo when she was talking about um, the X Factor. And, and uh, once again, everybody, we're going to be uh, putting our, our questions on Facebook for the show. And we want you to comment in because we're going to say your comment live. You can put anonymous or put your, even put your name up there and let us know that you want to use it. But the Caucasian folks, they started clapping, they started shouting, they started praising the Lord. And uh, the problem was, at the end of the piece, when it was over, the lady said she saw comments down the bottom that said, look at old white people trying to be black. And look at, and look at them trying, the white people trying to shout. Now, Butler, just like Kilo was just saying that the, the color shouldn't matter and it's all about Christ, what do you think about that? What, what stirred up all of this thing? It's like, you know, like, like you say, look at all these white people, white people trying to act black. It ain't about white people trying to act black. It's about people having a good time. And I think once we get past this whole, you know, white people trying to act black, black people trying to act white, we need to look at is, we're people who like to have a good time. When we see something that we like, or we see something that we enjoy, it is what it is, we enjoy it, you know, and, I think, you know, as black people, you know, we need to start, you know, we need to get more credit, you know, for the things that we're good at, you know, instead of saying, oh, it's because, you know, they're black that they have rhythm. It's because they're black that, you know, they can sing and, and dance like this. Yeah, you know, we have to work just as hard as everybody else to be good and excel in the things that we're excelling at. And so at the end of the day, everybody deserves to get the props that they deserve to get for, for doing what they do. You know, I think a lot of times when it comes to a lot of the talent that us black people have, we're not given the credit that we should be given. And a lot of times we do good, we excel at things like sports or even like in music, hip hop, R&B, whatever it is. And like what you said, what's going on with X Factor. And so instead of saying, hey, good job, you know, we really like what you were doing up there, you know, that was awesome. You know, they, gotta, they have to find a way to, to put some negativity to it. They gotta find a way to still keep us down. And so, when they see other people in the crowd or they see other people getting hyped and, and doing what we're doing, you know, because they're not doing the same thing that some of the, the younger white people are doing or doing some of the other things that the other people in the crowd are doing, you know, they feel like they have to be better because they don't understand it. Because there are issues there, there is turmoil going on in the world against this, this color, this nationality. The Bible does not speak about race at all. The Bible says this, the Bible says family, tribe, nation. These are words that we need to start gripping. My family, my tribe, my kindred, my yes. nation. 
Oh, wow. Coming from a young lady, age of... 24. 24. <laughs> Amen. Doing the work of the Lord. Radio, uh, we talked earlier, real estate. Yes. And things like that. Young people, I'm going to say today, I'm going to say my young African American. Yes. Young men and young women. Do not and give we're going to be back after this commercial with Butler, the servant, and he's going to be talking about a word on the street, all right? You are listening to Impulse Radio. You know what, Butler, that was very well put. And uh, you too, Kilo, yeah, I mean, you both get it right on the head. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, it's about what God has instilled in all of us. All of us don't have the same characteristics. All of us don't have the same skills and talents, but God doesn't see us as a color. He sees us as the same. And when, once we become unified with our Caucasian, with our Spanish, our Latino, all of us can become unified. Unless we become unified, this earth is going to get worse and worse. Even the Bible said it's going to get worse and worse. These are the last times, the last days. It's going to get worse and worse before it gets better. But we have to, even though the prophecy is there, we still have to be unified because we already know it's going to happen. And, and, and just to be talking about white and black, to me, I'm going to go with it right here, Butler and uh, Kilo, on a biblical sense. The Bible doesn't say anything about race. It says kindred, it says family, it says tribe, it says nation in the Bible. It doesn't say anything about black or white or Spanish. So with that being said, what separated all of this? What, what separated us as a people? I'm talking about all colors from the will of God. What, what made it happen? One thing I know, it was disobedience. But as Kilo was talking about earlier, uh, the same thing. How about you, brother? What do you think about it? What separated all of the races, or all of what the Bible says, the nations and tribes from each other? Uh, you know, when you look at uh, from the very beginning, you know, uh, even creation, you know, you know, since we're bringing the Bible into it, when you uh, talk about, you know, the scriptures, you know, if, if, let's, let's think about it. There's always been some type of racism throughout world history. And, you know, uh, if, if you look at it all, there's all types of examples in the Bible, you know, where, you know, God, he loved all types of people. It was never about uh, culture. It was never about uh, race. It was never about color, uh, rich, poor. You know, you, there's examples in the Bible, you know, where, you know, the Jews thought that they were better than Gentiles. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, what makes these people think that, you know, they should have the same promises that we have? But, but when you look at it, man, God never intended for it to always be about the Jews. You know, it, it, it was intended for God to love the whole world. And, and, and a lot of people back then had it twisted. It was, okay, we're the Jews, you know, we're the chosen ones. And what, what they didn't understand was that God used them as agents to reach the other nations. All right, and if you look at if you look at the, the, the New Testament, you see uh, Jesus coming in, and he's saying, look, the Gentiles need to hear this message too. You know, they're not dogs, you know, they're not, you know, uh, terrible people. They need the gospel too. And so, if, 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 if you look at it from that standpoint, God loves everybody, man. And uh, it, let's, let's, take, let's take it back to the beginning. Let's, let's take it back to the Tower of Babel. You know, if you look at the Tower of Babel, you know, back then it was one race. It was one language, you know, on, on, that, that was everything. That ran the world. You know, so they were building the, the Tower of Babel. They said, hey, let, 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 let us become great. You know, let us build a tower. High. Let's build a tower into the heavens. And so Nimrod got all his people together. They started building this tower. And, you know, God, God looked down and said, hey, you know, uh, this isn't right. You know, let us go down there and let, let us change the languages. You know, let us change things. So it got to the point as they were building the tower, neither, no groups could understand what, he, what each other was were speaking. They couldn't understand the language. So as they were trying to build, the job couldn't get done. No one understood each other. 
So this is this is what happens. You had these group of people who spoke this type of language. They went to this side of the world. You had those these other people speaking this side of the language from Babel, from the Tower of Babel. They went to this side of the world, and everybody went to the, you know four corners of the earth. And so like this is the first part uh, time in the Bible where you see a separation of races. You know from. Uh, from dark people, from, from light people to, to white people. This is the first time in the Bible you see that. And so throughout history, you know, God was constantly making it a point that, hey, it's not about that. It's not about what language you speak. It's not about what tribe you come from. It's not about money. It's not it's not about any of those things. And, and, and to bring it to bring it back home, we can go to the New Testament. We can go to the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. All these, all these Jews, you know, who were spread, you know, throughout, throughout the Roman Empire, they came together, and it says they were on one accord. All right, so, so follow me here. They were on one accord. They were all speaking in different languages, but they could all understand what each other was saying, all to hear the message of Jesus Christ. So that's what it's about. It's about bringing all, it's about bringing all languages, all people together to understand the message of Jesus. All right, so what was once a lost communication in the Tower of Babel, you see a restoration of coming together in the book of Acts, you know, which is what Jesus was all about. So let's, let's, bring, it, let's bring it to the day. Jesus wants all of us to come together and love one another. He says in the Bible, love one another. You know, the word love in the Bible is mentioned so many times. You know, uh, Jesus, he mentions it so many times. And it's about loving one another. Because as soon as we love one another and we all come together and we realize that, hey, you know, it's about the message. It's about, you know, bringing people together. Then we'll see that all this, this whole racism thing is it, it, real stupid. We'll see that it's irrelevant to the, to the plan that God has for all of us. And if we look at the examples that were in the scripture, we can see that God, he, he doesn't see color. He doesn't see race. Dude, ever since the beginning of time, he has always been trying to get people to come together, but to come together for the right purpose. And that's what we need to, that's what we need to go back to. We need to go back to that. We need to go back to coming together, being uh, a group of people, loving one another, and just putting out the message. You know, and, and just stopping all the violence, stopping all the hate, because it's all a big distraction to take us off of what's real, the, the, the prize, to take us off of Jesus. And that, that's, the, that's the plan of the devil. You know, that, that's what the devil, that's what that's what his job is in, that's what his occupation is, is in and, and distracting us. It's saying that he, he's putting a wedge in between people. And at the end of the day, racism is a part of the devil's plan. He uses the media, he uses uh, movies, he uses music, he uses all of these things to separate people. But God intended for those things to bring people together. And that's what we need to understand. We need, we need to come back together. And as soon as we do that, man, the world will be a better place. We know the scripture says that, you know, we are going to go through these times. But there will be a day, you know, where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, you know, the name of Jesus Christ. So that's what we got to remember in the back of our heads. Like, you know, what's the promise? Once we, we, we realize that, we're we'll understanding. Oh, I know you better preach over there, man. You really, you really brought it. The scripture into this thing, man. It is exciting to know. And, and, and also, Kilo did the same thing. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, this show is uh, all about the positive of what's been so negative for so long. Uh, applied knowledge is what's power. I, we always hear the saying that knowledge is power. No, applied knowledge is power. Knowledge from the word is definitely power. And that's exactly what we all I brought here today. And I'm, I'm trusting that you that's out there listening, that listen to each and every one of us, listen to Kilo, listen to what the servant and me, Minister Bob D. I'm trusting that if there's any prejudice, if there's any racism, uh, racist thing that's inside of you, I'm trusting that you would just put that to the side. It's the trick of the devil. Satan will not win. He will flee. Just tell him to get out of here because he will not destroy what God has made for the foundation. We are fearfully, wonderfully made. That's what the Bible says. We are likeness of his image. Not what society and what history has made it. It's what God has made it. Just understand that. And we got to understand that in those days, 
that it was only separation because of disobedience to God. That's why he separated each tribe and nation from each other because he was disobedient. It wasn't because of color. It wasn't because of race. It wasn't because of anything. It wasn't even because of the characteristics. As I said earlier to Kilo, it wasn't because that black woman over there had blonde hair or that black man had green eyes. It's not about that. It's about the love of Christ. So from the three of us, at WHOM, Internet, Radio, the home front, the new station, the Impulse. We're going to bid you farewell and continue to listen in to that station. Your boy, Butler the Servant. And I am Kiara Kilo Johnson from High 99. Thank you, Mr. Marvin, for having me. I had a great time. Hopefully, uh, I'm sure, God willing, you will see me again uh, for another great topic right here on Board. We're going to say farewell for now, and we're going to see everybody on the next segment. All right, continue to listen to that music on WHOM, Internet Radio, The Home Front, The Impulse.